Good morning, Youth Council. Caroline speaking. Oh, hello. I'm interested in standing for election to the Youth Council, and I was told to give you a call. That's good. Could I have your name, please? Yes, it's Roger Brown. Thank you. I'm Caroline, the Youth Council Administrator. So, do you know much about what the Council does, Roger? I've talked to Stephanie. I think she's the chair of the Council. That's right. And she told me a lot about it. How it's a way for young people to discuss local issues, for example, and make suggestions to the town council. That's what made me interested. Fine. Well, let me take down some of your details. First of all, how old are you? You know the council is for young people aged from thirteen to eighteen. I've just turned eighteen. And where do you live, Roger? <sighs> well, that's a bit complicated. At the moment, I'm looking for a flat to rent here. So I'm in a hostel from Monday to Friday. I go back to my parents' place at the weekend. Okay. So where's the best place to send you some information about the council? Oh, to my parents' address, please. That's seventeen Buckley Street, B U C K L E I G H Street, Stamford, Lincolnshire. Though you don't really need the county. Oh, I know Stamford. It's a lovely town. And what's the postcode? P E nine seven Q T. Right. Thank you. So, are you working here, or are you a student? I started studying at the university a couple of weeks ago, and I've got a part-time job for a few hours a week. What do you do? Well, I've done several different things. I've just finished a short-term contract as a courier. And now I'm working as a waiter in one of the big hotels. Uh huh. That can't leave you much time for studying. Oh, it's not too bad. I managed to fit it all in. What are you studying? My ambition is to go into Parliament eventually, so my major subject is politics. That's partly why I think the Youth Council is important, and want to be a part of it. And I suppose you're also taking a minor subject, aren't you? I know a lot of people study economics too. I chose history. To be honest, I'm not finding it as interesting as I expected. Okay. So, with your studying and your part-time job, do you have time for any other interests or hobbies? Well, I spend quite a lot of time cycling, both around town to get to university and to work, and also long distance from here to London, for instance. That's pretty impressive. Anything else? For relaxation, I'm also keen on the cinema. I used to go at least once a week, but I can't manage to go so often now. Right. Are you sure you'll have enough time for the youth council? Yes, I've worked out that I can afford to reduce my hours at work, and that will make the time. So, is there any particular aspect of the youth council's work that appeals to you, Roger? Well, my sister is blind, so I'm particularly interested in working with disabled young people to try and improve the quality of their lives. That's great. Well, the best way to get involved is to be nominated by some people who you know. Right. Can you tell me how to set about organising that? You should talk to Geoffrey, our elections officer. I can arrange a meeting in the council office with him if you like. Yes, please. He'll be here next Monday, if that suits you. That's the fourteenth, isn't it? Yes. I can manage late afternoon. Would you like to suggest a time? He generally leaves around five thirty. Well, would four thirty be okay? My last class finishes at four, so I'd have plenty of time to get to your office. Right, that's fine. Oh, and could I have a phone number we can contact you on? Yes, my mobile number's o double seven double eight one three six seven double one. Thank you. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Bye. Hello. Oh, hello. I wanted to inquire about hiring a room in the village hall for the evening of September the first. Let me just see.、Uh, yes, we have both rooms available that evening. There's our main hall that's got seating for two hundred people. 
Or there's the Charlton Room. Sorry? The Charlton Room. C-H-A-R-L-T-O-N. That's got seating for up to 100. Well, we're organising a dinner to raise money for a charity and we're hoping for at least 150 people. So, I think we'll go for the main hall. How much would that cost? Let's see. Um, you wanted it for the evening of September the 1st? Yes, that's a Saturday. So, from 6pm to midnight, that'd be £115. That's the weekend price. It's £75 on weekdays. That's all right. And I have to tell you, there's also a deposit of £250, which is returnable, of course, as long as there's no damage. But we do insist that this is paid in cash. We don't take cards for that. You can pay the actual rent of the room however you like, though. Cash, credit card, cheque. Oh, well, I suppose that's OK. So, does the charge include use of tables and chairs and so on? Oh, yes. And what about parking? Yeah, that's all included. The only thing that isn't included is... Uh, you said you were organising a dinner? Yeah. Well, you'll have to pay extra for the kitchen if you want to use that. It's £25. It's got very good facilities, good quality cookers and fridges and so on. OK. Well, I suppose that's all right. We can cover the cost in our entry charges. Right. So I'll make a note of that. Mm -hmm. Now, there are just one or two things you need to think about before the event. For example, you'll have to see about getting a licence if you're planning to have any music during the meal. Oh, really? It's quite straightforward. I'll give you the details later on. And about a week or ten days before your event, you'll need to contact the caretaker, that's Mr Evans, to make the arrangements for entry. He'll sort that out with you. And do I give him the payment as well? No, you do that directly with me. Right. Now, is there anything I need to know about what happens during the event? Well, as you'll be aware, of course, the building is no smoking throughout. Of course. Now, are you having a band? Yes. Well, they'll have a lot of equipment, so rather than using the front door, they should park their van round the back and use the stage door there. You can open that from inside, but don't forget to lock it at the end. OK. And talking of bands... I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but you must make sure that no one fiddles about with the black box by the fire door. That's a system that cuts in when the volume reaches a certain level. It's a legal requirement. Sure. Anyway, we want people to be able to talk to one another, so we don't want anything too loud. Oh, that reminds me. We'll be having speeches. Are there any microphones available? Yep. Just let the caretaker know. He'll get those for you. Right. Now, when the event is over, we do ask that the premises are left in good condition. So there's a locked cupboard and you'll be informed of the code you need to open that. It's got all the cleaning equipment, brushes and detergent and so on. Right. So what do we need to do after everyone's gone? Uh, sweep the floors, I suppose. Well, actually, they have to be washed, not just swept. Then you'll be provided with black plastic bags, so all the rubbish must be collected up and left outside the door. Of course. We'll make sure everything's left tidy. Oh, and I forgot to ask. I presume we can have decorations in the room? Yes, but you must take them down afterwards. Sure. And the chairs and tables should be stacked up neatly at the back of the room. I'll make sure I've got a few people to help me. Hello, Helen. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Jeremy. No problem. 
Well, we'd better work out where we are on our project, I suppose. Yeah, I've looked at the drawings you've done for my story, the forest, and I think they're brilliant. They really create the atmosphere I had in mind when I was writing it.、Oh, I'm glad you like them. There are just a few suggestions I'd like to make. Go ahead. Now, I'm not sure about the drawing of the cave. It's got trees all around it, which is great, but the drawing's a bit too static, isn't it? I think it needs some action. Yes, there's nothing happening. Perhaps I should add the boy, Malcolm, isn't it?、Mm. He would be walking up to it. Yes, let's have Malcolm in the drawing.、Mm. And what about putting in a tiger, the one that he makes friends with a bit later? Maybe it could be sitting under a tree, washing itself. And the tiger stops in the middle of what it's doing when it sees Malcolm walking past. That's a good idea. Okay, I'll have a go at that. Then there's the drawing of the crowd of men and women dancing. They're just outside the forest, and there's a lot going on. That's right. You wanted them to be watching a carnival procession, but、mm. I thought it would be too crowded. Do you think it works like this? Yes, I like what you've done. The only thing is. Could you add Malcolm to it without changing what's already there?、Mm. What about having him sitting on the tree trunk on the right of the picture? Yes, that would be fine. And do you want him watching the other people? No, he's been left out of all the fun. So I'd like him to be crying.、Mm. That'll contrast nicely with the next picture where he's laughing at the clowns in the carnival. Right, I'll do that. And then. The drawing of the people ice skating in the forest.、Mm, I wasn't too happy with that one, because they're supposed to be skating on grass, aren't they? That's right, and it's frozen over. At the moment, it doesn't look quite right.、Mm, I see what you mean. I'll have another go at that.、Mm, and I like the wool hats they're wearing. Maybe you could give each of them a scarf as well. Yeah, that's easy enough. They can be streaming out behind the people to suggest they're skating really fast.、Mm, great. Well, that's all on the drawings. Right. So you finish writing your story, and I just need to finish illustrating it, and my story and your drawings are done. So the next thing is to decide what exactly we need to write about in the report that goes with the stories, and how we're going to divide the work. Right, Helen. What do you think about including a section on how we planned the project as a whole, Jeremy? That's probably quite important. Yeah. Well, you've had most of the good ideas so far. <laughs> how do you feel about drafting something? Then we can go through it together and discuss it. Okay, that seems reasonable. And I could include something on how we came up with the ideas for our two stories, couldn't I? Well, I've started writing something about that. So why don't you do the same, and we can include the two things? Right. So what about our interpretation of the stories? Do we need to write about what we think they show, like the value of helping other people, all that sort of thing? That's going to come up later, isn't it?、Mm. I think everyone in the class is going to read each other's stories and come up with their own interpretations. Which we're going to discuss. Oh, I missed that. So it isn't going to be part of the report at all. No, but we need to write about the illustrations because they're an essential element of children's experience of reading the stories.、Mm. It's probably easiest for you to write that section, as you know more about drawing than I do. Maybe, but I find it quite hard to write about. I'd be happier if you did it. Okay. So when do you think we can get this ready? Good afternoon, Dreamtime Travel. How can I help you? Oh, hello. I'm interested in the holidays you offer along the coast near here. Yes, we operate several tours up the coast. Where in particular did you want to go? Well, I like the sound of the holiday that mentioned whales. Was it、um, whale watching? Ah,、oh, that's our whale watch experience. It's very popular, and it's based in a lovely little town with nice beaches. Oh right, and how long does it last? It's two days. That includes four hours travel time each way from here. Good. I don't want to be away any longer than that. So, is that by coach? Actually, it's by minibus. We like to keep those tours small and personal, so we don't take a whole coachload of people. In fact, 
we only take up to 15 people on this tour, although we do run it with just 12 or 13. Oh, right. So, do you run these tours often? Well, it depends on the time of year. Of course, in peak times, like the summer holidays, we do them every weekend. But at the moment, it's usually once a month at most. And when is the next one going? Hmm, let me see. Uh, there's one in three weeks' time, which is April the 18th. And then we don't have another one until uh, June the 2nd. All right. Um, and is April a good time to go? Pretty good, though the really good time is later in the year. I have to say, though, that the whale sighting is only one of the many things offered. Really? Yes. The hotel itself where you stay has great facilities. It's called the Palisades. Uh, the Paris what? No, it's actually the Palisades. P-A-L-L-I-S-A-D-E-S. It's right on the main beach there. Oh, I see. All of the rooms have nice views, and the food is really good there, too. Oh, right. And what about the other things, um, you know, that are included in the price? Oh, there are lots of things. If you don't want to do the Whale Watch cruise, your guide will take anyone who is interested either on a bushwalk through the National Park near the hotel, and there's no extra charge for that, or on a fishing trip. That's an extra $12, I think. And there's also a reptile park in town. That costs more or less the same. No, I think I'd prefer whales to snakes. Yeah. And if you just want to relax, you're free to sit by the hotel pool or go down the beach. Oh, and they also have tennis courts at the hotel, but you have to pay for those by the hour. But there are table tennis tables downstairs, and they're part of the accommodation package. Just speak to your guide. Well, that sounds good. Um, so how much is the basic tour price? At this time of year, it's usually around $300, but let me check. Um, oh, it's actually $280. And the next tour, are there any places on that one? How many people is it for? There are two of us. Yes, that should be fine. Can I just mention that we require all bookings to be made at least 14 days before you travel to avoid cancellations of tours? And... If you cancel within seven days of departure, you will have to pay 50% of your total booking. OK. And you also need to pay a 20% deposit at the time of booking. Can I pay that by credit card? Yes, you can. All right. Uh, what I'll do is I'll talk to my partner and get back to you. Fine. So I'll make a provisional booking, shall I? Two for the Whale Watch experience. Let me issue you with a customer reference number for when you call back. Do you have a pen? Yes. OK. It's 39745T. That's T for Tango. When you call back, ask to speak to the tour manager. That's me, Tracy. Fine, I will. Good morning. This is Burnham Tourist Office, Martin speaking. Oh, hello. I saw a poster about free things to do in the area, and it said people should phone you for information. I'm coming to Burnham with my husband and two children for a few days on June the 27th, or possibly the 28th, and I'd like some ideas for things to do on the 29th. Yes, of course. OK. Then let's start with a couple of events especially for children. The Art Gallery is holding an event called Family Welcome that day when there are activities and trails to use throughout the gallery. That sounds interesting. What time does it start? The gallery opens at 10 and the family welcome event runs from 10.30 until 2 o'clock. The gallery stays open until 5 and several times during the day they're going to show a short film that the gallery has produced. It demonstrates how ceramics are made and there'll be equipment and materials for children to have a go themselves. Last time they ran the event there was a film about painting which went down very well with the children, and they're now working on one about sculpture. I like the sound of that. And what other events happen in Burnham? Well, do you all enjoy listening to music? Oh, yes. Well, there are several free concerts taking place at different times, one or two in the morning, the majority at lunchtime and a couple in the evening, and they range from pop music to Latin American. 
The Latin American could be fun. What time is that? It's being repeated several times in different places. They're performing in the Central Library at one o'clock. Then at four, it's in the City Museum, and in the evening at seven thirty, there's a longer concert in the theatre. Right. I'll suggest that to the rest of the family. Something else you might be interested in is the boat race along the river. Oh yes, do tell me about that. The race starts at Offord Marina to the north of Burnham and goes as far as Summer Pool. The best place to watch it from is Charlesworth Bridge, though that does get rather crowded. And who's taking part? Well, local boat clubs, but the standard is very high. One of them came first in the West of England Regional Championship in May this year. It was the first time a team from Burnham has won. It means that next year they'll be representing the region in the national championship. Now I've heard something about Paxton Nature Reserve. It's a good place for spotting unusual birds, isn't it? That's right. Throughout the year, there is a lake there as well as a river, and they provide a very attractive habitat. So it's a good idea to bring binoculars if you have them. And just at the moment, you can see various flowers that are pretty unusual. The soil at Paxton isn't very common. They're looking good right now. Right. My husband will be particularly interested in that. And there's going to be a talk and slideshow about mushrooms, and you'll be able to go out and pick some afterwards and study the different varieties. Uh huh. And is it possible for children to swim in the river? Yes. Part of it has been fenced off to make it safe for children to swim in. It's very shallow, and there's a lifeguard on duty whenever it's open. The lake is too deep, so swimming isn't allowed there. Okay, we must remember to bring their swimming things in case we go to Paxton. How long does it take to get there by car from Burnham?、Mm, about twenty minutes, but parking is very limited, so it's usually much easier to go by bus, and it takes about the same time. Right. Well, I'll discuss the options with the rest of the family. Thanks very much for all your help. You're welcome. Goodbye. Bye. Good morning, Stretton Festival box office. How can I help you? Oh, hello. My family and I are on holiday in the area, and we've seen some posters about the festival this week. Could you tell me about some of the events, please? Of course. First of all, are there still tickets available for the jazz band on Saturday? There are, but only fifteen pounds. The twelve pound seats have all been sold. Okay, and the venue is the school, isn't it? Yes, that's right. The secondary school. Make sure you don't go to the primary school by mistake. And there's an additional performer who isn't mentioned on the posters. Carolyn Hart is going to play with the band. Oh, I think I've heard her on the radio. Doesn't she play the oboe or flutes or something? Yes, the flute. She usually plays with symphony orchestras, and apparently this is her first time with a jazz band. Well, I'd certainly like to hear her. Then the next thing I want to ask about is the duck races. I saw a poster beside a river. What are they exactly? Well, you buy a yellow plastic duck, or as many as you like. They're a pound each. And you write your name on each one. There'll be several races, depending on the number of ducks taking part. And John Stevens, a champion swimmer who lives locally, is going to start the races. All the ducks will be launched into the river at the back of the cinema. Then they'll float along the river for 500 meters, as far as the railway bridge. And are there any prizes? Yes. The first duck in each race to arrive at the finishing line. Wins its owner free tickets for the concert on the last night of the festival. You said you can buy a duck. I'm sure my children will both want one. They're on sale at a stall in the market. You can't miss it. It's got an enormous sign showing a couple of ducks. Okay, I'll go there this afternoon. I remember walking past there yesterday. Now, could you tell me something about the flower show, please? Well, admission is free. And the show is being held in Bythewaite Hall. Sorry, how do you spell that? B Y T H W A I T E. Bythewaite. Is it easy to find? I'm not very familiar with the town yet. Oh, you won't have any problem. It's right in the centre of Stretton. It's the only old building in the town, so it's easy to recognise. I know it. 
I presume it's open all day. Yes, but if you'd like to see the prizes being awarded for the best flowers, you'll need to be there at five o'clock. The prizes are being given by a famous actor, Kevin Shapless. He lives nearby and gets involved in a lot of community events. Gosh, I've seen him on TV. I'll definitely go to the prize giving. Right. I've seen a list of plays that are being performed this week, and I'd like to know which are suitable for my children and which ones my husband and I might go to. How old are your children? Five and seven. What about the mystery of Muldoon? That's aimed at five to ten-year-olds. So if I take my children, I can expect them to enjoy it more than I do. I think so. If you'd like something for yourself and your husband, and leave your children with a babysitter, you might like to see Fire and Flood. It's about events that really happened in Stretton two hundred years ago, and children might find it rather frightening. Oh, thanks for the warning. And finally, what about Silly Sailor? <laughs> That's a comedy, and it's for young and old. In fact, it won an award in the Stretton Drama Festival a couple of months ago. Okay. Well, goodbye and thanks for all the information. I'm looking forward to the festival. Goodbye. Okay, Greg. So I finally managed to read the article you mentioned, the one about the study on gender and physics. About the study of college students done by Akira Miyake and his team. Yeah. I was interested that the researchers were actually a mix of psychologists and physicists. That's an unusual combination. Yeah, I got a little confused at first about which students the study was based on. They weren't actually majoring in physics. They were majoring in what's known as the STEM disciplines. That's science, technology, engineering, and and math. Yes, but they were all doing physics courses as part of their studies. That's correct. So, as I understood it, Miyake and Co. started from the fact that women are underrepresented in introductory physics courses at college, and also that, on average, the women who do enrol on these courses perform more poorly than the men. No one really knows why this is the case. Yeah. But what the researchers wanted to find out was basically what they could do about the relatively low level of the women's results. But in order to find a solution, they needed to find out more about the nature of the problem. Right. Now let's see if I can remember. It was that in the physics class, the female students thought the male students all assumed that women weren't any good at physics. Was that it? And they thought that the men expected them to get poor results in their tests. That's what the women thought, and that made them nervous. So they did get poor results, but actually they were wrong. No one was making any assumptions about the female students at all. Anyway, what Miyake's team did was quite simple: getting the students to do some writing before they went into the physics class. What did they call it? Values affirmation. They had to write an essay focusing on things that were significant to them, not particularly to do with the subject they were studying, but more general things like music or people who mattered to them. Right. So the idea of doing the writing is that this gets the students thinking in a positive way. And putting these thoughts into words can relax them and help them overcome the psychological factors. That lead to poor performance. Yeah, but what the researchers in the study hadn't expected was that this one activity raised the women's physics grades from the C to the B range. A huge change. Pity it wasn't to an A, but still, no. But it does suggest that the women were seriously underperforming beforehand in comparison with the men. Yes, mind you, Miyake's article left out a lot of details. Like, did the students do the writing just once or several times? And had they been told why they were doing the writing? That might have affected the results. You mean, if they know the researchers thought it might help them to improve, then they just try to fulfil that expectation? Exactly. So anyway, I thought for our project we could do a similar study. 
But investigate whether it really was the writing activity that had that result. OK. So we could ask them to do a writing task about something completely different. Something more factual? Like a general knowledge topic? Maybe. Or we could have half the students doing a writing task and half doing something else, like an oral task. Or even half do the same writing task as in the original research and half do a factual writing task. Then we'd see if it really is the topic that made the difference or something else. That's it. Good. So, at our meeting with the supervisor on Monday, we can tell him we've decided on our project. We should have our aims ready by then. I suppose we need to read the original study. The article's just a summary. And there was another article I read by Smolinski. It was about her research on how women and men perform in mixed teams in class, compared with single-sex teams and on their own. Let me guess. The women were better at teamwork. That's what I expected. But actually, the men and the women got the same results, whether they were working in teams or on their own. But I guess it's not that relevant to us. What worries me, anyway, is how we're going to get everything done in the time. We'll be OK now we know what we're doing. Though I'm not clear how we assess whether the students in our experiment actually make any progress or not. No, we may need some advice on that. The main thing's to make sure we have the right size sample, not too big or too small. That shouldn't be difficult. Right, what do we need to do next? We could have a look at the timetable for the science classes, or perhaps we should just make an appointment to see one of the science professors. That'd be better. Great. And we could even get to observe one of the classes. What for? Well, OK, maybe let's just go with your idea. Right, well... I've brought my notes on our biology field trip to Rocky Bay, Colin, so we can work on our report on the research we did together. OK, I've got mine too. Let's look at the aims of the trip first. Right, what did you have? I just put something about getting experience of the different sorts of procedures used on a field trip. But we need something about what causes different organisms to choose particular habitats. I agree. And something about finding out how to protect organisms in danger of dying out. In our aims? Mm. But we weren't really looking at that. I suppose not. OK, now there's the list of equipment we all had to bring on the field trip. What did they tell us to bring a ruler for? It was something about measuring the slope of the shore. But of course we didn't need it because we were measuring wind direction and we'd brought the compass for that. But not the piece of string to hold up in the air. <laughs> didn't Mr Blake make a fuss about us leaving that behind? Yeah, he does go on. Anyway, it was easy to get one from another of the students. Now, the next section's the procedure. I sent you the draft of that. Yeah. Um, it was clear, but I don't think we need all these details of what time we left and what time we got back and how we divided up the different research tasks. Mm, OK. I'll look at that again. Then we have to describe our method of investigation in detail. Mm. So let's begin with how we measured wave speed. I was surprised how straightforward that was. I'd expected us to have some sort of high-tech device, not just stand there and count the number of waves per minute. <laughs> not very precise, but I suppose it was good enough. But the way we measured the amount of salt was interesting. In the water from the rock pools? Yeah. Oh, I wanted to check the chemicals we used in the lab when we analysed those samples. Uh, was it potassium chromate and silver nitrate? That's right. OK. And we need the map of the seashore. You just left that to me. And I had to do it while the tide was low. Well, that was OK, but the place I started it from was down on the beach. Then I realised I should have gone up higher to get better visibility, so I had to start all over again. But at least I'd got the squared paper, or I'd have had problems drawing it all to scale. Yeah, it looks good. We could get a map of the region off the internet and see if we need to make any changes. 
Hmm, I had a look, but I couldn't find anything. But you took some pictures, didn't you? Yeah, I'll email you them if you want. OK, I'll make my amendments using those. Then I can scan it into our report. Great. Now, when we get to our findings, I thought we could divide them up into the different zones we identified on the shore and the problems organisms face in each zone. So, for the highest area... The splash zone. Yeah. We found mostly those tiny shellfish that have strong, hard shells that act as protection. But not from other organisms that might eat them. Predators. No, that's not the main danger for them. But the shells prevent them from drying out because they're in the open air for most of the time. Right. And since they're exposed, they need to be able to find some sort of shelter or cover themselves up so they don't get too hot. Mm. Then in the middle and lower zones nearer the sea, we need to discuss the effects of wave action. Yes, and how organisms develop structures to prevent themselves from being swept away or even destroyed by being smashed against the rocks. Mm. I haven't done anything on the geological changes. I don't know what to put for that. Mm, no, we weren't concentrating on that. Maybe we need to find some websites. Good idea. I've got the lecture notes from Mr Blake's geology course, but they're too general. Mm. But we could ask him which books on our reading list might be most helpful. Right. OK. Now, I did a draft of the section of sources of possible error in our research, but I don't know if you agree. For example, the size of the sample and whether it's big enough to make any general conclusions from. But I thought, actually, we did have quite a big sample. We did. And our general method of observation seemed quite reliable. But we might not be all that accurate as far as the actual numbers go. Yeah, we might have missed some organisms. Mm. If they were hiding under a rock, for example. Mm. I wasn't sure about the way we described their habitats. I decided it was probably OK. Yeah, and the descriptions we gave of the smaller organisms, they weren't very detailed, but they were adequate in this context. I'm not sure we identified all the species correctly, though. OK, we'd better mention that. Now, how are we going to... Hi, Joanna. Good to meet you. Now, before we discuss your new research project, I'd like to hear something about the psychology study you did last year for your master's degree. So, uh, how did you choose your subjects for that? Well, I had six subjects all professional musicians and all female. Three were violinists and there was also a cello player and a pianist and a flute player. They were all very highly regarded in the music world and they'd done quite extensive tours in different continents and quite a few had won prizes and competitions as well. Mm. And they were quite young, weren't they? Yes, between 25 and 29. Um, the mean was 27.8. I wasn't specifically looking for artists who'd produced recordings, but this is something that's just taken for granted these days, and they all had. Right. Now, you collected your data through telephone interviews, didn't you? Yes. I realised if I was going to interview leading musicians, it'd only be possible over the phone because they're so busy. I recorded them using a telephone recording adapter. I'd been worried about the quality, but it worked out all right. I managed at least a 30-minute interview with each subject, sometimes longer. Did doing it on the phone make it more stressful? I'd thought it might. Um, it was all quite informal, though, and in fact they seemed very keen to talk. And I don't think using the phone meant I got less rich data. Rather the opposite, in fact. Interesting. And you were looking at how performers dress for concert performances. That's right. Uh, my research investigated the way players see their role as a musician and how this is linked to the type of clothing they decide to wear. But that focus didn't emerge immediately. Uh, when I started, I was more interested in trying to investigate the impact of what was worn on those listening and also whether someone like a violinist might adopt a different style of clothing from, say, someone playing the flute or the trumpet. Hmm. It's interesting that the choice of dress is up to the individual, isn't it? Yes. 
You'd expect there to be rules about it in orchestras, but that's quite rare. You only had women performers in your study.、Mm -hmm. Was that because male musicians are less worried about fashion? I think a lot of the men are very much influenced by fashion, but in social terms, the choices they have are more limited. They'd really upset audiences if they strayed away from quite narrow boundaries.、Mm. Now, popular music has quite different expectations.、Uh, did you read Mike Frost's article about the dress of women performers in popular music? No. Well, he points out that a lot of female singers and musicians in popular music tend to dress down in performances. And wear less feminine clothes,、um, like jeans instead of skirts,、uh, and he suggests this is because otherwise they'd just be discounted as trivial. But you could argue they're just wearing what's practical. I mean, a pop music concert is usually a pretty energetic affair. Yes, he doesn't make that point, but I think you're probably right. I was interested by the effect of the audience at a musical performance when it came to the choice of dress. The subject I interviewed felt this was really important.、Mm. It's all to do with what we understand by performance as a public event. They believed the audience had certain expectations, and it was up to them as performers to fulfil these expectations to show a kind of esteem. They weren't afraid of looking as if they'd made an effort to look good.、Mm. I think in the past the audience would have had those expectations of one another too, but that's not really the case now. Not in the UK, anyway. No. And I also got interested in what sports scientists are doing too with regard to clothing. Musicians are quite vulnerable physically, aren't they? Because the movements they carry out are very intensive and repetitive.、Mm. So. I'd imagine some features of sports clothing could safeguard the players from the potentially dangerous effects of this sort of thing. Yes, but musicians don't really consider it. They avoid clothing that obviously restricts their movements, but that's as far as they go. Anyway, coming back to your own research, do you have any idea where you're going from here? I was thinking of doing a study using an audience, including. Excuse me. I was told to come here for advice about、um, management diploma courses. You've certainly come to the right place. Hi,、uh, my name is Monica. N nice to meet you. My name is Andrew. Andrew Harris. So, Andrew, have you seen our diploma course prospectus yet? Yes, I've already looked at it. In fact, I thought the information on course content was really useful, but I'm afraid I'm a Bit confused by all the different ways you can do the course, full-time, intensive, part-time, and so on.、Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if I can help. I think each course type has its advantages and disadvantages, so it really depends on you, your own study habits, and your financial circumstances. Of course, are you working at the moment? Yes, I've been working in the administration section of the local hospital. For the last three years,、mm -hmm. and before that, I worked in the office of a computer engineering company for two years. So I've got about five years of relevant work experience.、Mm -hmm. And what I'm hoping to focus on is personnel management. I see. And are you planning to leave your current job to study, or are you thinking about just taking a year off? I want to know what my options are. Really, I don't want to quit my job or anything. And my employers are keen for me to get some more qualifications, but obviously, it would be better if I could do a course without taking too much time away from work. Right. So you don't really want to do the full-time course then? No, not really. It's also a question of finances. You see, my office have agreed to pay the cost of the course itself, but I would have to take unpaid leave if I want to study full-time, and well. I don't think I could afford to support myself with no salary for a whole year.、Mm, okay. Well, you have two other possibilities. You could either do the part-time course, that would be over two years, and you wouldn't have to take any time off work, or you could do what we call a modular course. You could do that in eighteen months if you wanted, or longer. It's quite flexible, and it would be up to you. Hmm.、Uh, so, what does the part-time course involve? For that, you would join an evening class and have a lecture twice a week.
Then you'd have to attend a seminar or discussion workshop one weekend a month. What kind of coursework would I have to do? Well, it's a mixture. You'd be expected to write an essay each month, which counts towards your final assessment. You have a case study to do by the end of the course, which might involve doing a survey or, or something like that. And also, you need to hand in a short report every four weeks. So that's quite a lot of work then, on top of working every day. It sounds like a lot of studying, and really tiring. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't have much free time. What about the modular course? What would I have to do for that? Well, that's where you get the opportunity to study full time for short periods. That way, you can cover a lot of coursework and attend lectures and seminars during the day. And each module lasts for one term, say about twelve weeks at a time. There are obvious advantages in this. The main one being that you can study in a much more intensive way, which suits some people much better. And how many of these modules would I have to do to get the diploma? The current program is two modules, and then you have to choose a topic to work in more depth. But you can base that on your job, and so you don't need to be away from the office. And how long it takes is up to you.、Mm -hmm. The important thing is that you don't have to study and work. You can focus on one thing at a time. Yes, I can see that. It certainly sounds attractive. It would be more expensive, though. I mean, I'd have to support myself without pay for each module.、Mm -hmm, that's true. So that might be a problem for you. Look, why don't you talk this over with your employers and then?